But what emerged in the early 1960s was a challenge race between the researchers of the Bell Telephone Laboratories and the researchers of the General Electric Laboratories as to who could reach 10T demonstration magnet the first. There was a, going to be a prize, and the prize was uh, uh, measured in cases of scotch. The race begins. Roland Schmidt takes an order from Bell to build the world's most intense magnet. This magnet would have to be 200,000 times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field at the surface. So there were a group of us, uh, a fellow named Mark Benz, who is a metallurgist, and Carl Rosner, uh, and Paul Swartz, and actually it was a much larger group, but these are the people who worked very hard to try to learn to make these superconducting magnets. The superconducting magnet team in Niskayuna begins working with niobium tin, a new material used by Bell Labs a year earlier. Soon it was apparent that the task was not going to be easy. With many problems came up along the way, including these magnetic instabilities called flux jumps, which we had to work hard to work our way around, and that's what I was working on. Carl begins to work on designing and testing magnetic coils with new materials. Mark Bentz and Lou Martin work with a stranded conductor, a wire made of tiny filaments. Finally, in May of 1963, they succeed with coil number 214. They're able to energize a magnet with only six ordinary car batteries. Without superconductivity, it would have taken two million watts of energy to do the same job. And as long as the magnet is kept cold, it stays charged indefinitely. But we built the world's most powerful magnet, which was 100,000 Gauss. You know, it, it was a money-losing <laughs> sale. Was it? <laughs> yeah, it was. It took us a long time mm -hmm. and a lot of work to do it. The big question of the day was, uh, would the physicists at the Bell Telephone Laboratories uh, reward the physicists at the General Electric Laboratories with the uh, spoils of the original wager that they had made. Uh, I can't remember how many cases of scotch, but it was significant. There was a big party. You know, the notion that General Electric could sort of come from behind and beat Bell Telephone Laboratories in a contest was, was just ecstasy as far as the participants were concerned. The success of the 10 Tesla coil opens up new ideas for uses of superconductivity. So GE continues developing new magnets. The magnets had to be bigger 